Alright guys, welcome back to another episode. In this video, we're going to go over the electric setup overview, the wiring diagram, all the parts we picked, why we picked them, the journey that I've been on. It's not really a beginner's video, it's more of an intermediate video. It's a video that I wish that I had before I started. So I'm a complete beginner and we're about to install our electrics and I thought I'll give you guys an overview before we get in there and start installing things. So, this is majority of the parts, Nike, slippers included, appropriate for the occasion. We have our inverter, the MPPT for the solar, we have our Orion for the battery to battery charger, and I'll walk you through all of these, the rest of the bits in the wiring diagram that I'll jump into in a second. All of these things are going to have to fit under here to the electric bench. So I'll show you guys a 3D overview that I mocked up, where things are gonna go, why, or my thinking process behind it. And now let's jump into the vine diagram. Where I'll show you all of these things, uh, how they are connected and why we got them. Alrighty, so before we jump in, let's have a quick overview of our setup. We're going to have 12 volt, 400 amps, lithium batteries from Roma and I'll talk more about these batteries later on and Roma as a company. 800 watts of solar total, four times 200 watt panels from Crank Solar. Victron Energy Smart Solar MPPT 15060TR. This is what converts the solar power into power that's usable for our battery so it can charge them. Victor Energy MultiPlus 3000, 230 volt inverter charger, so we can charge our batteries when we are hooked up to shore power, as well as use 230 volt from our batteries or from shore power. Victor Energy Orion TR Smart 30 amp DC to DC charger. This will basically charge our leisure batteries from the starter battery when we are driving. And last I added this, it's not really part of the main build, but it's a pretty important accessory. We will be using the Victor Energy Servo GX and GX Touch for monitoring all our electricals, so solar coming in and so on, the power we use. And we should also be able to use this to monitor our water and wastewater tanks levels and so on. All right, so before we jump into the wire gram, just one last thing, a quick background on why our setup is pretty big. Uh, we have no LPG or gas on board. The whole build is going to be diesel and electric. So the water heater that you saw last week can run on diesel or electric and cooking is going to be done on an induction hob and we might get a air fryer or an electric oven as well so if you do a quick maths or if you're planning to do an electric build let's say you get an induction hob a low powered induction hob because they can go pretty high so let's just so uh, let's just say a low powered induction hob is between 700 watts to 1800 watts on two burners let's just say we are using one burner most of the time or medium heat so in this case, let's just say we'll average around a thousand watts drawn at 230 volts. So a thousand watts drawn at 230 volts from 12 volt from our 12 volt batteries that equates to 83 amps per hour. So we'll be using, if we are not hooked up to shore power, we'll be using 83 amp hours from our 400 amp batteries so if you cook for two hours a day and let's say our solar hasn't charged at all and we haven't driven anywhere that means that we used over 166 amp hours basically half of our batteries for two hours of cooking assuming nothing is charging so that alone is half of our battery bank and it leaves us 200 amps for for everything else on top of the all electric build we both work from remote and on top of that we have lots of electronics, filming, photography and so on 
including flying custom build first person view drones these drones have batteries that go that last about two three minutes i have about 10 of them and they need charging basically after a half an hour of flying so that requires quite a bit of power as well if i'm out flying all day at a cool location but anyway let's jump into the wiring diagram cool so here is the 3d overview of the setup that i blocked out in our bench seat uh, i'll quickly walk you through but i don't want to take up too much time on this so on the left hand side of the bench we'll have the inverter and then we'll have the orion charger on the right hand side on this wall facing us as we open the bench we'll have the 230 volt consumer unit and the 12 volt consumer unit so it's kind of easily accessible then we have the Lynx distributor which distributes the power from the batteries to the MPPT to the inverter and so on so this just helps connect everything to the battery and so on we'll have some cutoff switch here and a shunt and so on and on the right hand side here we will have the MPPT and the MPPT cutoff switch if we need to cut off power from the solar panels coming in this is the rough overview hopefully this will work out in practice i'm not sure this has been uh, bugging me for ages and been playing around with loads of different variations we're also thinking about potentially putting stuff on the inside face of the bench but at the end we decided this configuration as if you put things on the inside it's kind of hard to look at them when you open the bench so we decided that this side on configuration probably is going to work out best i'm not sure we'll find out but let us know what you guys think and obviously the battery the big one 400 amp battery will sit at the bottom here so let's jump straight into the wiring diagram all right, so here's our wiring diagram. And before we jump straight in, as you can see, this wiring diagram was provided for us by Roma. Roma actually rents out camper vans, but they also now sell batteries and that's how we found them. I was looking for an affordable battery that I didn't have to build myself. Um, and I, that's how I found them. When I reached out to them, they actually do an online consultation service so as soon as i found out that they'd done online consultation it was pretty much a no-brainer for us as the service costs 120 pounds but if you spend over a thousand pounds on electrical components not including the batteries then they will credit this back to you and they also price match all the equipment so really we had nothing to lose i had a pretty good idea of all the parts that we wanted by having quite made a wiring diagram yet at this point as it was about to start and having Steve from Roma on the consultation call make sure that all the components is fine and then provide this awesome wiring diagram for us was perfect and gave us a peace of mind so if you're a beginner or a bit more intermediate make sure and you need a bit of help make sure you give Steve from Roma a shout and tell him that Lars and Cass sent you let's get back to the wiring diagram righty so let's jump into the wiring diagram and i think the easiest way to do this is to start at the batteries so i'm not going to go through every single part i just want to give you guys a rough overview of roughly where the wires are going what are they doing and how the power is being distributed because once we get into the bench and so on it's going to be a bit more confusing so hopefully this will help so we'll have the 400 amp, it says 300 here, but we actually upgraded to the 400 amp lithium battery uh, in the bench. And then from there on, we have two 95 mil cables. The black is going to the shunt and then the red will go to a fuse to a switch so we can isolate. And then that gets connected to the Lynx distributor. So basically the Lynx distributor just helps to connect everything else to the batteries. If you don't have the links distributor or a bus bar then everything would have to get connected to the two terminals on the battery and it would be annoying so basically this helps keep everything nice and neat with fuses 
and it's pretty awesome. So from the distributor, as the name suggests, everything gets distributed. So let's start with the actual power distribution. So once this is live from there, one of the positives and negatives go to the 12 volt distribution board and from the 12 volt distribution board, we'll have wires going to all the circuits. Next up, we have the 230 volt distribution units. Now to have 230 volts, which is over here, you need an inverter. The inverter V gun for is the Multiplus 12 3000 VA. And that's important to note that this is not watts. It's actually 200, 2400 watts continuous, not 3000. And same with if you're looking at a Multiplus 2000, it's actually, I think it's 1600 watts continuous, not 2000. It's a bit confusing. But anyway, we have two 95 mil cables going to the Multiplus. The Multiplus turns 12 volt into 230 and the 230 flows into the RCDs and MCB consumer unit, which then powers our plugs and goes off to all our 230 loads. Just before we move on, I just wanted to clarify that we have two RCD MCBs here. We're actually only having one set. The Multiplus have two outputs, one of them that's only live when you're hooked onto shore power. So that's pretty useful if you have something crazy like aircon and you only want it to be live when you're hooked up. Um, but we don't need that output. We're only gonna, going to be using output one which will power all our circuits, which are always live, even when we are not on hookup. So you can kind of ignore this part of the diagram. So that's 230 done. Next, we can go to our charging sources. Let's start with the solar. And feel free to pause this slide uh, or this video and look at the wires in detail, the sizes and so on. Obviously, I'm not a qualified electrician. This is not advice. I'm just showing you what we are doing. So we're going to have four 200 watt solar panels. We originally wanted to go with 190, but we got upgraded to 200 watts. So we're going to have four 200 watt panels connected in series. Those panels come in through the roof and they actually go to an isolator so we can shut the panels on or off. And then from the MPPT, the MPPT converts the power coming in from the panels to usable power to the battery. So these two wires come down and connect to the Lynx distributor, which then connects back to the batteries. The next charging source is the Ryan DC to DC. So as you can see, here is a starter battery at the front of the van. The starter battery gets charged from the engine alternator. And when we are driving, if there is enough amps in the battery, so if it's full or if it's charging, then we, that gets connected. Well, it's always connected to the Orion and Orion monitors the voltage between the starter battery and the leisure battery. And if everything's right and we can pull power from here, then it will charge our batteries. So bat wires from the start battery come to the Orion. And then from there, we go around back to the Lynx distributor, through the fuse, and then that flows all back to the batteries. Last but not least, we have the Serbo GX here, which will have all the data cables from the Multiplus, from all the chargers, everything connected to the Serbo. The fresh water tanks, the gray water tanks and so on will get connected here as relays. And at the end, we'll have one touch screen mounted with all our loads, uh, battery percentage, solar panel power coming in and so on, monitored on one unit. So it should look nice and neat. Last thing that I left out is the shore power. So you guys saw us install the shore power. The shore power comes in and it goes directly into the Multiplus. So the Multiplus manages shore power coming in, the battery power converting it to 230, 
if we are not using order 230 from the shore power then it basically goes into the power that we are not using from the 230 then flows back around and charges the batteries so the multibus is great as it manages all of that and we don't have to do any of it manually it manages everything as soon as you plug in how much to send to the consumer unit how much to send back to the batteries to charge and so on we have one additional cable here so the multiplus actually have an option to charge or if you run a wire it will charge the starter battery as well when you are hook up or from your leisure battery so we'll install an optional switch and we have a wire going all the way back to the leisure battery so when we flick this switch we can charge the start battery if that happens to die so that's the quick overview as you guys see when everything is broken down into little pieces it's not as complicated but as i mentioned before if this is if the, all of this is extremely confusing then you really need to go back and research the basics there are tons of videos online and I'll share some of my top resources now. So I'm just gonna share some of the top resources. Number one is Will Krause. He's awesome at explaining the basics of electricity, loads of solar panel basics and so on. It's not purely camper van related, but it will teach you a lot of things regarding solar, charging and so on. And I really recommend this channel if you're going to go down the DIY build your own lithium battery which I almost did but I found uh, Roma batteries which I think was affordable for us and I highly recommend his electricity explained volts amps watts fuse sizing and this whole playlist is a gold mine so go and check out his channel next up we got explorers.life it's a, I think American based channel so some of the things are going to be slightly different in the UK but he has so many awesome videos and blog where he explains so many awesome things in great detail including how to crimp stuff he's got loads of short videos solar panels in series and so on I couldn't recommend his channel enough and he has a awesome, I think two hour long video of how to install a complete camper van electrics system. Actually it's an hour long, um, so I couldn't recommend it enough. This has been an absolute gold mine for me. And lastly, I, I think most people are aware of Greg Virgo. If you aren't, then obviously you need to go and check out his YouTube channel he goes into loads of detail about wiring and so on. So I don't want to regurgitate any of this stuff. Just go and watch these guys' YouTube channels. So this is it for the electrics overview video, guys. Hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them. Next week, we'll be back with the shower build and hopefully we can crack on this crazy electrics build soon subscribe and thanks for watching